So yeah, welcome everyone to Code Refinery. So, first off, a little privacy note. This workshop is recorded and streamed. So the stream includes, we'll store the video for 14 days and then we'll go away. And if we get clean recordings without any voices or people inside, then we'll keep it for even longer and we'll put it on YouTube. But that's only if we can guarantee privacy of participants. So about this workshop. So this, there's a difference between science and computing. So many different fields of science need computational tools. So they may need programming, while the science itself is something different. The science is about the, um, like, the science is, um, well, some other math or whatever other field. And oftentimes in academic programs, you don't learn the kinds of skills you need to do this computing well. And this is a big problem. And that's what Code Refinery is for. So we're here to make sure that everyone has the tools that they need in order to do their science without any uh, barriers. So what does that mean? Um, so within Code Refinery, we are a Nordic project that teaches these basic scientific computing tools. So in this workshop, you'll learn things like Git and testing and so on, all kinds of stuff. We're funded by the Nordic e-infrastructure collaboration and we run this workshop and others like it. Also, we run a Nordic-based GitLab, which is available at source.coberfinery.org. So how this workshop works. So in the main room, we have talking and demos, as with many things, but that's not the main point. The main point is that this is an interactive workshop. So we have type longs where you'll be working at the same time that we're working. In fact, that's why we have this interesting vertical screen being shared. So half of the screen is for you and half is for us for the, for the screen share. We have exercises in breakout rooms. And this is the most interesting and cool part of this workshop. So a year ago, we started doing things online like everyone else and we could reach, what, 20 or 30 people at once. But that's not enough. I mean, the promise of these modern technology, techno technological tools is that we can reach everyone in the world. We can reach everyone in the world at once. Um, but then we go and immediately, like, we can't really scale that much. Well, by having teams like we've been registered as, we're able to scale to far more people. And by some clever use of technology and other tools, we're able to mm, live stream it also so that everyone in the world can watch and see, which is great. So we'll have breaks often at least 10 minutes every hour. If we start going over, you should complain loudly about this. And so keep in mind, we have a lot of material here. So everyone will have a slightly different path and that's okay. We don't expect to cover all of the material that we have. And we don't expect everyone to focus on the same sides of the material. But well, that's okay. I mean, we're all at different levels. We have hundreds of people watching this, so this will even be more extreme than usual. So there's different ways to watch. You can join via Zoom and then you're watching that way. Um, within the meeting, you can watch via live stream. And live stream will be slightly less interactive, but we hope to have something for you. So you'll have all the instructions and probably some demos while we are in the breakout rooms. This depends on the lesson and exactly how it works. Um, and then you can watch recordings later. And all of these can fit together so we can reach as many people as possible. So who are we? So we've got, um, we have some course coordinators here of which 
Naoi, Tatara, and I are the main ones. We have many instructors, many expert helpers, and many other exercise leaders. Um, yes. So maybe after the intro, we can take an introduction of some of the us, but we have so many that I don't think it's reasonable for us to introduce everyone right now, unfortunately. But you'll get introductions to all of us as we go on. So let's talk about some of the things that might go wrong here. So not everything is going to be perfect. So we have more material than we can cover, and we adjust to the audience. So every lesson has some advanced, um, advanced sections, which we won't cover and also some advanced topics within each different episode. But that's okay, don't get stressed. So we'll, we know what we have and we'll cover what we need to cover. Our instructors are still also learning. So of course we've been doing this for a long time, but there's basically no limit to the amount that you can possibly learn while doing this. So yeah, we'll make mistakes, Mistakes are part of the pedagogy of the course. So you learn the most when you see someone do something wrong and have to debug it. We do this on purpose. Um, the exercise leaders and in the breakout rooms are also learning at the same time. Um, and they aren't expected to know everything. So we have um, yeah, many different helpers here. The exercise leaders are doing this as a uh, service to, to you. If anything goes wrong, let us know and we'll do something. So this includes, well, whatever it may possibly be. So bad audio, um, font size, breakout room issues. We have plenty of people around to help solve any problem that you may have. So let's see, some practicalities. So we've gone over the different formats. Most important is these teams. So we've assigned everyone a team or breakout room. And within this breakout room, it should stay the same during the whole workshop, which means that you get to know the people and you, um, yeah. So the first day it may be a bit of an introduction, but later on you'll have the group of five or so people. You know them and you stay with them the whole time. And this is great for interactivity. So then we've got chat and communication. So we have the Zoom chat and the Twitch chat. Well, there's no way that we can possibly keep on top of all of these chats. So that's not the main way that you should ask us questions. Instead, there's HackMD, like we were doing for the icebreaker. So the HackMD serves as our chat basically. So you scroll to the bottom and you always ask questions at the very bottom. So you make a new bullet point and ask away. And then people can answer different ways. So they'll answer in sub bullet points and you might get several different answers. So this is great because it's nonlinear and threaded. But the disadvantage is that there's a lot of questions coming on here, a lot. So some of us, like our specialized HackMD watcher, will try to uh, do everything and make sure everything is organized. But you as learners, don't worry too much. You can ask a question and come back to it later. It's not gonna scroll off and get lost. So at the end of every day, we'll take this and we'll post it on our website. So it serves as a permanent reference for you and nothing is ever lost. But this also means that you should uh, not include anything private on it. So we've already gone over a demo of going into edit mode, so I will show it here again. Uh, here's HackMD. If I click edit, then I see the thing, and I can scroll down, and let's try asking a question. And let's see if someone answers. Yeah, 
So we've got answers coming in. Okay. So whenever you're not actively watching, please switch it to view mode instead of edit mode. So we're still seeing how well this will scale to many people. In previous workshops, it could work with 100 or so. And let's see if it works with a bit over 100. So everything in this is public. So if you're watching via the live stream, you can see things here. So don't include any names. Always refer to things by breakout room number or whatever. Okay, in Zoom. So if you're watching via Zoom, please rename yourself to include the breakout room number like you see here. And if you are the exercise leader, include the H in your name for helper. And we use this to assign you the breakout rooms and make sure that the rooms are balanced and all that. To rename yourself, you can do that from the participants list and then hover over more here and then click rename. So I saw in chat that one person couldn't uh, rename themselves. That's okay, we'll deal with it as we can. So unlike previous workshops, you're not expected to join the breakout rooms. No, we don't have to assign you. So if you're using the Zoom client, then we can have you join via the breakout room. You can join the breakout room yourself and we'll give you instructions on this later. Another note on Zoom, you can turn on this dual monitor mode in settings, which despite the name actually means two window mode. And you have a separate window for the screen share and for the gallery and people. And this can be useful whenever you want to, um, let's see, like to have a slightly larger screen share. So if you have only one monitor, it can be difficult to fit everything on the window. But that's why we have this vertical um, screen layout. So half of the screen is designated for, your, for our screen share, and half is for the space to work. So you can have your web browser, your terminal, possibly HackMD, all of these different things open to refer to stuff. Uh, please consider sharing like this when you're in the breakout rooms also. Um, yes. And if you're in dual monitor mode, then this top part here with the people gets removed. Okay. So we're all one community here. And it's not just instructors here lecturing to you all, but everyone is helping everyone. So you should be respectful and helpful. So it's actually very hard to teach and mentor for technology like this. So here's four different pieces of advice for you. So first off, everyone's at different levels and that's expected. So everyone will be learning different things um, and focus on different topics. And this is completely okay and expected. I mean, some people may be here and watching and seeing it for now, and then they'll come back later and join and be more active. That's the way we all sort of start with things. So then everyone is both a teacher and a learner. So when you're in breakout rooms, you're helping each other. It's not just an exercise leader answering questions for other people, but uh, everyone's sort of figuring it out together. So be careful with this. So as you're helping others, you know, think, are you, am I helping someone the best I can? Am I at too low a level? Am I at too high a level? Take the time to check in. So whenever you're in the breakout rooms, um, you know, ask, um, how's it going? Is everyone getting what they need? Are we, um, like, are we too fast for anyone, too slow? Is that okay? Will you check in later? Mm. And when something isn't going right, speak, or I guess more likely write in the HackMD up quickly. So we want to help even if the answer is let's discuss later. The instructors and helpers aren't perfect. As I said before, no one knows everything and sometimes things goes wrong and that gets fixed in part of the pedagogy. Our exercise leaders have graciously volunteered to help things work together, but 
They used to be called the helpers, and now they're exercise leader, which means that they don't know everything. So their role is to keep the room flowing smoothly and to call for help from someone else whenever the time is needed. In the worst case scenario, if something goes wrong, we have a code of conduct to, um, to act, but we expect this to not happen and for our talking and checking in above to fit in anything which may be needed. So as final notes, we have um, a, our privacy. So yeah, hopefully everyone is here now. We stream and record this workshop. Please leave your video off in the main room. So it shouldn't be captured and stored anyway, but well, things can go wrong. Um, your voice that you speak in the main room may be captured, streamed, and uh, recorded on Twitch for 14 days and put in YouTube. So that's why we recommend everyone to use HackMD and not voice. Um, breakout rooms are completely private, so there's no recording or streaming or whatever in there. The chats are just in there. HackMD content is posted on the course page without names. Please make it easy and leave names off in the beginning. And all outputs are released in a, with a Creative Commons by license assuming that we do manage to get these outputs released. Let's see. And if you would like certificates, you can mail us afterwards at support at coberfinery.org. And please join us. Um, you can see more about that at these links. So with that being said, would some instructors like to introduce themselves or should we immediately begin um, the course. I count one. I count 12 different instructors that are possibly here. Maybe we should save time and get to our break sooner. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree because of it, it's already 20 minutes in. So maybe we can introduce ourselves at the beginning of each lesson. Yeah. And uh, one more question or reminder about privacy for the instructors. Is it so that it's important for the instructors to be careful about unsharing screen share? So before you stop screen sharing, please say it so that Richard can yeah. switch to a title card or something. Yeah. In fact, don't. It's better. Don't stop screen sharing. Let someone else take it over and share the HackMD. Yeah. Which I can do anytime someone asks. So with that being said, first off, we have, oh, I need to be more up to date with the schedule. So we have Sabre and Diana, I believe, who are teaching us our first lesson, which is Git intro. So can one of you grab the screen share and begin? <laughs> 